Hola. Hi, Facebook. Hi, Facebook. Hi, Facebook. We're going to wait a minute for some people to hop on here. And if they don't, then we'll just get started and y'all can watch it later. I'm back. Hi, John. That's John Kendall. Cool. Thanks, guys. Um, hey, Caitlin. So sorry if we have some interruptions. We've got the kids here. Hey, Joe. So this is Nolan. Hi. Hi, Nolan. Okay. Nolan, you're going to have to let Daddy and I do our live, and then you can come say hi. Yep. Afterwards. Why? Okay. It's just what we have to do. Otherwise, you're going to get some more chores. Everett. Yeah. Go on. Go go play. Go watch Netflix. Go do something. Wish five again. You guys get to do this. Okay. Introduce the connection project. Come okay. with me, boys. Please. All right, guys. So we might have some interruptions here because we're we're having an electronic free weekend for the kids or for Nolan especially. And now he's mad because we're um, going live on Facebook. So. Um, first of all, welcome back to the Connection Project. It has been months and months and months since I did my last episode, and um, in that time, we've moved our family to Austin, um, and we both started new jobs, and life has been kind of crazy. So um, we are back now with a bang. If you guys don't know, this is my ex-husband and friend, Brett Kinker. Superman. I'm, I'm Lauren Shepard, um, and we're going to be kicking off episode four on, hey, Marion, on co-parenting. Co-parenting. Um, so Brett and I have a really unique situation. Um, we have decided to co-parent in a way that um, a lot of people say can't be done. So um, Not the societal standard. Right. So even the lawyers that we worked with during the divorce were... Uh, very skeptical of, and the judge and the judge we're very, very rude. we're very skeptical about skeptical. um <laughs> about the decisions and the directions that we were we're headed um and we get tons and tons and tons of questions um and compliments sometimes too on what we do and questions about how we how we do it so we decided to connect today um and try to connect the co-parenting world out there. I know there's a lot of people that are in our shoes as far as being divorced uh, with kids. Um, and so we would like to share what we believe to be the right way to co-parent or the way that works best for us yes. um, with you guys and how we came to this conclusion mm. and um, and how we kind of make it work on a, on a daily basis. So um, just a little caveat here. This episode is not about our divorce. Um, we, we can't, you can take her, Luna, yeah. go on, Luna. um, this episode will not be about our divorce. Um, I did do my first connection project episode on an aspect of me and Brett's divorce. Um, so I can put that in the link below, um, and you guys can give it a watch. It's, um, pretty colorful and challenging, and I'm sure he and I could have a separate connection project yes. episode on that another day, but this is strictly about co-parenting. So, and this is also not how to save your marriage or how nope. to get a divorce or should I get a divorce or should I not get a divorce? Not at all. Um, marriage is really sacred and, um, and we do believe in relationships and, and healthy marriages. Um, and what, so this is about once that decision is made, once you decide as a couple to get a divorce, okay, um, now what, what now, what do you do? So, um, we have two kids and we knew that, um, from the get go that this divorce was going to be really difficult for them. So, um, we, we knew that our priority number one from day one yes. was going to be, how do we make this as least challenging, um, as possible for them? Um, and was there a lot of anger? Was there a lot of hurt? Was there a lot of confusion and questions on both sides of yes. the fence? Um, absolutely, absolutely. But the love that we have for our kids is, um, is unwavering and, uh, and it was confusing for us. So we knew it had to be confusing for them. Yes. Um, so, um, from there, Brett and I both went to therapy separately. 
um, to kind of battle a lot of the things that were going on internally for him and for me. Um, and that leads me into, you know, and Brett can talk on this too, obviously, um, but there has to be self-work done in this process. You cannot, it, what didn't work for us to not go through therapy, to not ask ourselves some tough questions um, and have the relationship that we do today. So you wanna talk a little bit about that? Sure, so in the, the fun thing about all of this is is these lessons that I learned uh, carried over into everything in life, truly, uh, not just in our co-parenting, which we feel is really successful today, uh, the divorce, but everything in life. Um, <clears throat> there's a lot of different phases that I went through, uh, you know, some of the more stereotypical, obvious ones in the beginning. Um, I've actually seen divorce from both sides. Uh, I've seen it from the person who left and the person who got left. Um, so I know it very well, uh, and it's very different. Uh, the second time around was is a whole new animal. So there's a lot of different phases that I went through, uh, but ultimately, the choice to co-parent successfully and to build a new life slash relationship was my main objective. And I'm one of those people who's very driven. When I when I've got something I want, I go after it with everything I got. So initially I lost a lot of friends, uh, probably cost me a couple jobs. Um, it was really tough, uh, but I kept my goal in mind and therapy was a huge tool. Uh, you know, it's funny because you go through life with all these preconceived notions on how you're gonna handle every situation if it ever comes up. And if you'd asked me, I don't know. 10 years ago? 10 years or ago or years, any year before years, that. Yeah. It's like, what would you do if this ever happened? Oh, I'll tell you what I would do. Snap. I'd do this and this and this. Until it actually happens, you don't know. And here's the fun thing. It doesn't have to be bad. It doesn't have to be horrible. Um, therapy was a key tool for me. I'm going to shout out. I'm just going to say, Melissa Milner, uh, you changed my life. And you, you led me to the path that got me to happiness. And not just in co-parenting or divorce but in all kinds of things in my life. And of course, my faith. Um, I lean on my faith really heavy. Um, so that's, that's some of the things that, you know, I had in my head in the beginning. I'll tell you this, it's not easy. It's by no means easy. This is a life challenge I don't wish on anybody. Um, it's, it's extremely difficult. And then all the things that ensue afterwards, even after I re I've said repaired myself. Is that a good way to say it? I don't know. Grew. After you grew. Rebirthed myself, my soul, um, into the person I am today. Uh, you know, everything that goes after that is continually challenging. So the ability to uh, overcome challenge with happiness, love, and success was dependent on fixing everything all at once. Yeah. It's kind so of jumbled, I guess. one of the things that I wanted to touch on um, is that I'm sure everybody that's been following my page or um, we talk about ego a lot and um, it's a really big, hairy, scary monster that tells a lot of lies. Um, and just a little bit of information about our divorce. Um, I had an affair. Um, and I wanted a divorce. <laughs> sorry. Um, and so, but that just gives you some context on the amount of emotions that were going on um, when we made this decision and the things that Brett had to overcome as far as feeling betrayed um, and lacking trust and being really angry at me um, for hurting him and, and doing what I did. So I think um, going to therapy really helped him and me um, kind of get past the situational specifics of what was going on and release that ego and say, okay, what is the end goal? What, what are the fundamentals of why we want that? And how do we achieve that um, without pointing fingers and staying angry and blaming? Because guys, I see it every single day. Oh, I hear it from stories after stories and not just in divorce, but in all things. Um, well, he did this and she did that and they owe me and so much resentment and so much, which 
is all valid. All yes. of those feelings are a hundred percent valid sure, absolutely. Um, and should be discussed and those feelings should be expressed. Um, but at some point in order to get to where we are today, you have to be able to let that go. Yeah, you can't um, choose to live in those emotions. Well, you can choose to live in those choose. emotions the rest of your life, but I'll tell you this much. Life is way too short. Um, I try to spend as little time as I can in anger, hate, blame, um, all these to me are, is a waste of time. So every minute that I have in this body, um, I want to spend it as happy as I can and making everybody around me happy as well. Right. So step one, go to therapy, no matter what kind of preconceived notions you have about therapy or therapies yes. for the week. Therapy means you're crazy. Whatever. Yeah. You know, whatever that. you think about it, yeah, yeah. it really is helpful to get a third party objective sounding board to help you process your emotions and your feelings about it. Um, and sometimes we don't have the tools to do it by ourselves. Um, and so therapy, I would say that is step, step number one. Um, so, and some of the things that you're going to go through are shame. I felt a lot of shame and a lot of guilt that I still have to work on today. Um, and Brett obviously has a lot of anger and a lot of, you know, why and resentment and, you know, things That's that he had to process, you know, but we're both in a much better place now. And therapy was a integral part of that. So over, um, the, over the last couple of years, I have had to, a good way to describe it is I had to figure out a way to let go of, my marriage, whatever you want to call that, romantic relationship with this woman, um, and develop a new relationship with her as a co-parent and a friend. Um, and that's challenging. It really is. Um, yeah. It was way harder than the cold hard facts of events that happened. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, because one day you're you're married and just having what you think is normal stuff, and then the next day they're like, nope, it's done. And you're just kind of like, whoa. So that transition takes a lot of time and it takes a lot of work. Um, but I think, you know, we had two real good reasons to, to keep working on it. Um, and we did. And, yeah. You know, it's obviously it was, uh, it was a win. I think the number one driving factor for both of us was not only our own mental health and well-being, getting through it in a healthy way, but the kids. Uh, every decision that we make yeah. is because it's the best we think for the children um and for so everybody. For, everybody, for everybody you know yeah. so whenever i have bad days and want to be angry and feel guilty and it makes me you know second guess myself i had i say nope this is for the kids and yeah sure brett come over you know have dinner whatever so it's fun <laughs> one of my favorite things is uh you know i'll be like what are you doing this weekend oh man i'm going down to the lake they're like oh you're going to the lake who are you going with i'm like i'm, I'm, I'm going um, with both my ex and they're like, what, what, what? Wait, what? Like, what? Yeah. And anyway, it's where we are today is, uh, is, is fantastic. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, I'm sorry, I'm getting off track. No, that's okay. So yeah, number one is therapy. Um, and then, you know, after we decided to go through therapy and we said, okay, yes, co-parenting is, is definitely what, what we want to do. Um, if you guys have any questions, throw them in the comments and we'll try to try to answer them about that. But um, once we got to this point, um, the logistically, we had to figure out, okay, like what are, what are the logistical challenges that come Huge. along with, with making this decision? And they are great. They are great. We realized um, quickly that we are geographically bound to live in close proximity with the, with the choice that we made. And that's huge, uh, cause we don't have standard custody, um, which the judge made very clear to me was the option. Yeah, uh, we have 50 50 custody uh, because we both want as much time with our kids as we can. Right. Um, and, you know, everything is set by us. We set our own rules. Right. Um, we we wrote the book on the what we're doing because everybody else told us it had to be the other way. Yeah. So the divorce, the, the lawyer and the judge were like, they were telling us that it couldn't be done. And parents say this all the time. And then they end up fighting and blah, blah. So we kind of had to we had to write our own our own way on this um so we decided on 50 50 custody so the kids are with me for a week and then they're with brett for a week um, which obviously means that we have to live close to each other for the duration of their uh childhood yes. um and close to each other means 30 minutes 
no longer. <laughs> uh, no longer. So we switch on Sundays and we try to spend time together on Sundays as a family. And quite frankly, we spend more than that. Um, we've, it's gotten to a great place that he can come over for dinner during the week and vice versa. And all, you, all of you guys know I have a boyfriend and have for two years now. So a fantastic boyfriend. Okay. <laughs> Um, so, you know, navigating that can be a whole separate episode in and of itself. Um, but I expect that, did you? I'm just going to tell people, people ask me, oh, this is a question I get a lot. They're like, how are you even possibly friends with your new boyfriend? And I said, how is it even possible that you understand that I don't want a great man in my kid's life? She's going to be with somebody. What do I want? Right. I want a guy that's rude, cruel, that doesn't like kids. Come on, man. Yeah. You know, when you pose it to them like that, also they're like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, and then also, you know, we know that when you have a divorced family and the kids are in one house for a certain amount of time and then they're in another house for a certain amount of time, it is like uber, uber, uber challenging. And it's so important that we stay a united front. Um, and we're not perfect at it all the time. Mm -hmm. We're not perfect at any of this all the time. Let's be real. Some days are really tough. Um, and I struggle with depression and anxiety. So I, I struggle with dealing with that within this framework. Um, and so that's another thing I wanted to touch on guys, um, within this process, you know, at whatever point you're at, you have to really look inside and know what you're feeling and what you're thinking and why. Um, and be able to set some healthy boundaries. I remember one time I called Brett and I was like, look, every time I'm around you, I feel guilty. Yeah. And it's not your fault that I feel guilty, but I do feel guilty and it's exhausting for me. And I, I just need to take some space from you. And you can't call me and you can't, you can't come over as much because every, it's a, it was a huge trigger for me to be around him. Um, and it is still sometimes, but being able to set that boundary yeah. And communicate and that communicate, with him yeah. and say, look, I'm not blaming you. I know that this is going on within me. I have to set this boundary so that we can, so I can get past this and we can get to the other side. Communication is key and it's, it's constant. Um, it's constant. It's, it's no different than <laughs> parents that are still together communicating constantly, but only we just have, we're logistically separate. So it makes it a little more challenging even so. Um, but yeah, it has to be constant. We have to stay on the same page. Right. Have to be. So we actually have this app and we make lists and it syncs, we, it syncs up and with Nathan too. Um, and so we have all the rules on the list. Yep. Um, when a, and then when a new one pops up, we add it, we talk about it. Sure. Um, and you know, we have Nolan who's autistic and that is was the whole thing was challenging for him even more challenging, even more challenging for him Let's on that fire. <laughs> yeah um so we talk we talk about everything yeah. um and all the school emails come to both of us oh, my goodness. and yeah. we yeah. go to the conferences together um we still we constantly have meetings because uh, as all of you know most of you i'm sure are parents and i don't mean to tell you the challenges of being a parent but um being a, in a co-parenting group or a blended family um, we still have meetings all the time. Like we get together because child rearing is always evolving, as mm -hmm. you all know. Um, and we constantly have to tweak things and move things around. Um, but we do it together. Like we get together and we sit and we're like, all right, I got a few bullet points we got to hash out tonight mm -hmm. and figure out what we're going to do. And then we, we agree on it and we go forward and, and move on. Man. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, logistically, those are some, some of the things that we do. It's a united front. And now Nathan's in it. Uh, last night we were all sitting around the fire and he said, your kids and Brett was quick to tell him, Hey man, like you're in this too, whether you like it or not. <laughs> um, what are, what are some other logistical things that we face? Uh, one of the things I like to do to, to help keep a United front is when I'm at my house and I'm um, doing any kind of disappointing or anything like that. Um, my verbiage I think is very important. Um, oh yeah. I reiterate as like, no, mommy and daddy, this is our rule. This is mommy and daddy's mommy and daddy say mommy and daddy are doing it. So, you know, I constantly throw her back in there, even though her presence isn't there, um, just so they know, or, you know, sometimes I'm like, Hey, you know, how mommy and daddy feel about that. Um, so verbiage is important. And let me just say this about that. 
I'm there's, reading comments. I didn't know there were so many. Oh, wow. There's a lot of, uh, uh, I've read a lot about bad divorces and using the kids to pit against the other parent. And um, that that's a heartbreaker. Um, it's really tough. Kids um, don't have any business dealing with the divorce or being used as a tool against the other person. Um, so, you know, we've made a huge point that that's never going to happen. Right. Um, Brett's so, not a bad guy. Right. And I'm not a bad exactly. person I either. Mean, just because our so, marriage wasn't successful doesn't make either one of us bad people. And, you know, a lot of people get caught up into that. They're like, no, you know, certain events that happen to people, they, they hold it over their head for the rest of their life. And I think that's a ridiculous waste of time. Yeah. Um, it, it's just sad. Anyway. Uh, United Front. And that's um, where I think therapy comes comes oh, in. Man. You know, if you don't do the self-work, if you don't look within yourself and find forgiveness, not not for them, but for your own for well-being, your own well-being. Um, and all then, your challenges. then every challenge going forward is going to have a foundation of anger and resentment and guilt and shame. And you can never make good decisions from that kind of foundation. So um, therapy, I just think, is such a huge important part of this um and that segues into marianne's question and actually a question that we expected to get um what do y'all suggest when one parent wants a healthy oh, yeah. co-parent situation and the other one has no desire and guys i've i have friends I've that are that in this situation so much thought because i get asked it constantly constantly right um and the fact of the matter is is i was really lucky I was really lucky because I did something that was really, really hurtful and Brett decided, Brett made the choice to go to therapy and he believed me. I remember, I remember saying to him, I don't want to be married to you anymore, but you're still a, such a great friend and I want to co-parent with you. I want to make this right and I want to have birthdays together and I want to have um Christmases and holidays and I don't want this to be the regular way and he was like I just don't see how it can work and yeah. I've never seen any couple do that before and yeah. you know blah, blah 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 and I'm proud of myself for keeping what I wanted at the forefront of the conversation and I'm proud of him for coming around and and having faith in me after after betraying yeah. him that we can figure out how to do this one, one thing I'll say, getting trying to get that question, one thing I know for sure, and she's alluding to it a little bit saying, hey, I'm lucky this guy decided, made the choice. You, you will never change anybody, and that's a sad fact, and it kind of sucks. Um, so you can propose ideas to them, um, if, and they can choose what they're going to do. And sadly, um, a lot of people are ingrained in their character that they are only going to do a certain way, a certain thing. And that kind of sucks. Um, and you might start out small uh, with your requests. Uh, and I really do hear this question so many times. Um, I did play in the dating pool for a while. And a lot of the women that I talk to, they're just like, I wish I could do that, but he won't do that. And I, I didn't really know what to say to that. I've given it so much thought. And I don't think I still have a good answer um, because I, I know in my heart, you can't change anybody as bad as you want to. So I don't know if you could try to maybe segue into it, like with small things like, hey, man, you know, let's just be communicate openly. Let's put our relationship aside for a second and talk about yours and my relationship and raising these kids. And hopefully they're going to be an adult about it. Um, that's kind of rude. Anyway, hopefully they'll buy into it enough where you can start working into uh, a situation much like ours. Um, and you know, people, I still run into a lot of people that just don't get it and they don't want to get it. They're just like, you know, uh, we do shared holidays in events mm -hmm. and that's not an option in our book. We don't want our kids to have two Christmases and two, and I don't think that anything I say is a blow to anybody that does it the other way. That's a really good point. All situations are different and in, in the case where they are unable to evolve into a relationship uh, like we have, um, I get it, I get it. But in our situation, we wanted them to have, that's maybe a better way to say it, we wanted them to have one uh, 
of each of these events. And it's funner. I, I mean, I don't know, man. You know, they have both their parents there and everybody's happy and having a good time. They don't feel like they have to choose. Right. Um, and the decision's not made for them and it gives them as much independence and comfort and safety mm -hmm. um, as they possibly can in the midst of them not having the family that they used to have. Um, you know, and I would say too, no, you absolutely can't change another, another person. Um, and unfortunately, if they're not willing to go to therapy and they're not willing to, <laughs> um, and they're not willing to, um, work with you, I think at that point, that's something that, again, you have to come back to self and, and release the outcome of having a co-parenting relationship that would be your ideal, right? Um, and instead of going forward and being angry at them because you don't have what you want, um, figure out a way to accept it because um, if you can't, then you're also gonna be coming from a place of anger and resentment that you're not having a co-parenting relationship that you want. Um, and so again, it comes back to self-work and being saying, well, this is how he is, and this is what the decision has been made. I'm going to do the best I can on my side and keep my street clean and and yeah. go forward doing the healthy things that I know are best for me and my kids um, and 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 oh. let it and let it lie and, and try to and try to release it because at the end of the day, what energy you put out is going to come back to you. Yeah. And if you are angry about it and you're constantly thinking it's not going to work out and you're constantly angry and you're constantly pointing the blame and he did this and he's this way and blah, 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 you're putting that energy out and you're going to get it back. Um, and so I think the best way to go forward is to just sit back and work on self and release the expectation that he should change or needs to change or isn't changing and it's not fair. You can, um, like I say to you, you can always or try. She, or she, right? it could be the chick that. You can always try small things, like maybe um, joint gatherings, uh, small ones, you know, right. like meet for lunch and just say, hey, would you be open? Hey, to but let's go to the park together for yeah. an hour on Saturday. Um, because I think when you're, when you're fearful um, and angry and you just keep everything separate, nothing can grow from that, right? So you just start really, really small. Um, that's a, that's a great question that, you know, we are not totally equipped to answer because we're not psychologists and all of that stuff. We're just sharing our experience. Um, I know that, uh, what else? Well, what's uh, on your notes over uh, there? Financial challenges. Oh, that's financial challenges is tough. Yeah. So, uh, financial challenges are always tough and, you know, I'm like, sitting at work and she'll call me and she'll be like, Hey man, I'm down at Target buying a bunch of clothes for the kids. I guess you're going to pay half. I'm like, no, get out of Target. Get out. Leave Target now. No, but seriously, um, you know, there's financial challenge too. And we still uh, budget. We have these written, well, hers is digital, mine's old fashioned, we'll pen and paper. Uh, so we budget what we spend on the kids. And at the end of the month, um, we hash it out and we pay each other money. So each other. <laughs> some details on, on finances, finances is we split everything 50, 50, yes. um, that kids. pertains to the kids. So that includes birthday party expenses, um, clothing, clothing, um, school, school daycare, daycare, lunches, uh, field trips, health insurance, health insurance uh, stuff uh, like that. Now, um, we do this because we decided no child support. Yes. Um, if we were going to be splitting the kids 50, 50, I had a job, he had a job. Yeah. We were going to be living in our own houses. So I'm responsible for my rent and bills and car and all of that stuff. And he's responsible for right. his. Um, so there's no child support exchange going on other than every month yeah. we go, we go through, through the budgets. kids, ex the kids expenses. And say this is how much I paid. This is how much he paid, and Whoever's we the even, even it out at the yeah, end of every month. Up. And that's a big one. It really is because now you're getting into um, you know the other person's money, and and right. because we don't have a, a, a married relationship anymore, um, you know obviously our finances are separate. So that's that's a big challenge. That's 
probably a lot of people I can see have a tough time getting into. Yeah, and you could decide that, you know, especially if you're a stay-at-home mom and then you separate and, you know, obviously that put, I was, I was, I've had a career, so I had a job and I felt really safe knowing that I was going to continue to have that um, and be financially stable enough to not need um, financial help from him and him not from me going forward. Right. Um, and so not everybody's in that situation and we totally recognize that. And I think the key is, is don't worry about what's right or wrong or what the lawyer says or what the judge says. As long as you can communicate what your needs are and you know what your situation is and you know what you want, talk, talk to each other yeah. and figure out what works for y'all. The same way you would do in the marriage, the same way anybody would do in anything, um, you just have to figure out what works for you in the moment. Um, and so that's that's what we do. We, it's everything's 50-50 um, financially. Yeah, absolutely. That's, yep. a, that's a major challenge. What else? Uh, setting up the rules in both households, obviously, and you, you may think, well, that's a no-brainer. But it's it's really important to have the same set of rules and guidelines. Yes, um, we have that app. Yeah, yes, uh, and I mean it's super important because <laughs> you can't have Glamourville at one house and, <laughs> and penitentiary at the other one. Yeah. I mean, <clears throat> it, that sounds like a no brainer, but I mean. Yeah. Is. We do shared holidays. What else? Major changes used to oh, be. You can't read my chicken scratch yeah. and think you're going to know what it means. Oh, major changes, uh, especially having an autistic kid every time. Mm -hmm. Like when we moved to Austin, uh, they needed to be planned and slow and yes. very methodical and calculated. Um, always with the other parent. That's another thing, right? The same way you would do when you're still married. Uh, say he's at my house and, you know, not all the rules are the same, but the way we do things might be a little bit different, sure. right? Um, and, but he's at my house or I'm at his house and I say, and Nolan, go do blah, 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 blah. And <clears throat> Nolan says, that's not how we do it here. I fully expect Brett to back me right. in that moment still and say, nope, your mom told you to do something. And the more unified we can be, the less we're going to see well, daddy said, da, 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 da. and this is what we do at daddy's house and the playing against the parents, um, that tends to happen a lot, especially with divorce, divorce kids. Oh, and, and back to finances and kids and making it a united front. Like when we give gifts from for birthdays and or for Christmas, it's from both of us. It's not, this is from mommy and this is from daddy. Um, it's from both of us, and I think that really helps them feel, okay, I still have my mommy and my daddy, and one's not better than the other, yeah. right? Um, and that really that really helps. That helps with ego, too. I'm laughing a little bit because we're doing a, a co-parenting live, and, and kids are screaming. Killing each other. Oh, it's awesome. Yeah. It's great. Anyway. Um, and so let's, I do, I do want to kind of wrap it up. Um, it's two 30. So if you guys have any questions, we are here to answer right. specific questions for I'll, you. I'll share another thought I've heard a lot and I'm, I'm just going to be real blunt about it. Um, I have a, a lot of people that I've met over time is like, well, why didn't you just stay married then? Oh, I haven't had people ask me that, but I wonder. I've, I've heard that. More times. times than I can count. If you're doing all the things that you would do at married anyway. Right. And here's, here's as blunt as I can put it. Our marriage did not succeed, um, but everything else is going to. That's it. That's as plain as I can put it. Yeah. Um, we have great lives, um, you know, love my life. It's not say it's glamorous or not challenging at all. We're, we're always going to have challenges. Yeah. Um, but, you know. Let me just touch on that for a second because we're here and we're smiling and and it's great. And we're talking about how wonderful it is. Um, and that is true. Um, but I definitely don't want to create some sort of highlight real image that this isn't like difficult. Do on Facebook. <laughs> um, there are major challenges that occur in what we do sure. because something that has caused us hurt is right there in front of us every single day. Yeah. Um, and 
it's not like a clean break. Okay, I've got a divorce. I never have to see or talk to or hear that person's name ever again. Um, so there's things that come up still for me to this day, and I'm sure for you, um, that come up that make it difficult. Um, and with now that I'm dating somebody else and that added a whole new level of, of, um, emotions to, to the mix. So this isn't, this isn't easy necessarily, but I promise you it's easier than not Oh, doing this. I couldn't imagine. I, I don't even want to. Yeah. I feel so much mm. love and light and joy in my heart knowing that this is mm. what we're doing, even on days oh, yeah, when man. it feels hard. Even, yeah. As opposed to me spending my life hating him Oof. and figuring out how yeah. to hate him and raise two kids at the same time. Yeah. And that I, that to me would be that seems a hundred times harder. Crazy to us. A hundred times yeah. harder. Yeah, people look at us like we're crazy, and we look back at everybody else like they're crazy. Like, like, yeah, I'm not going to spend my it time. Seems crazier being yeah. angry all the time, um, which or a it, lot, or a lot. Like, not a, yeah. yeah, you know, a lot. Um, but it does have its challenges, and it and it is hard sometimes, and it and sometimes you, I do feel like, oh, okay, meeting everybody needs to be involved. Me, Brett, Nathan. Yeah. Okay, what are we going to do? But Whose job's means, going where? Meetings about everything. You know, um, in the beginning, you know, um, man, we went through a lot of different phases. We we did a cohabitation phase. Oh yeah, we beginning. lived together that for a while in the beginning. Super challenging. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. You know, we went through a phase. Then it's like, okay. Oh, thanks, Amy. Thanks, Akina. Stop cohabitating. What's the next phase? Next phase is two places, and we, you know, we talked everything out before we did it. We never jumped into anything, um, and that was key. And it was really hard. But, yeah. You know, like I said, uh, I'm the prize. Um, you know, I did tons of research and I'm going to tell whoever's on this thing, who listens to it, you know, I'll talk to anybody about any of this. I'm happy to do it. Um, and if people want ideas or they want to hear deeper about my story and my challenges and the, and the seasons I went through to get to where I am today, I'm, I'll share it with them, man. I don't know, you know, on what platform, um, but I'm happy to do it because like I said, it's not an exaggeration when I say that, you know, I went through a couple jobs and I mean, some major life events uh, going through all this and each phase I did different stuff and pulled from different tools. Uh, and I built this toolbox that helped get me where I am today. Um, yeah. And, you know, I'm more than happy to share that with anybody yeah. that wants to go. And if you guys want to hear more from us about different things, how, how we went, if you want us to talk about something more specific, something more specific yeah. if we want, if you want us to talk about the actual divorce and how, how we actually process that sure. and the tools that we used, um, a lot to it. and you know, because a divorce, um, with betrayal like affairs and stuff like that definitely not easy Mm -hmm. um so we can definitely go deeper into that and again you know a lot of times it's it's uh at least for me this is my experience i felt a lot of shame and like i didn't have a right to be angry and like i didn't have a right to be upset because i was the one that did the thing (laughs) um and Um, and so if anybody's going through that same thing and wants to reach out to me and we're definitely open to talk more specifically, we just wanted to talk about co-parenting. Marion said, so forgiveness and releasing ego, ego are primary and communication. Boom. You Marion. That's the one thing I wanted to cover and I'm being able to forgive is beyond huge. Yeah. And it's essential. And, you know, I used to, in the beginning, I would just tell myself, I got to have Christ-like forgiveness. Um, and that's like, as far as I'm concerned, the biggest level of forgiveness you can, you know, yeah. um, and, and you have to, and, and people would come to me all the time in the beginning. Well, I haven't thought about this in a while. And they'd say, man, like, I don't understand. How can you forgive her for that? That's unforgivable. And I'm like, are you kidding me? It's like, I forgave her for me because I wanted to get on with life. I didn't want to live in that forever. And I'm, I'm, and I won't. Yeah. Um, so forgiveness is beyond huge. And when you can forgive not only yourself, but the other person, right. And yourself, you can get to a place. Amy just said, and blame sounds like you two have let go 
and stopped playing the blame game. But oh, yeah. this definitely takes two people, which is obviously easier yeah. said than done. Yes. Or all of our forced couples would be like you guys. Absolutely. Yes. Um, and Everybody wants to assess blame uh, for certain things, and they want to lean on that like it's the. It was an event. That's why I keep calling it, it an was event. One thing. It was an event that happened. Um, and, you know, let's just pretend that that event and everything before that was fairy tale. You really think that one event would crush an entire fairy tale? I, I don't think so. So there's a whole lot more to the story, um, you know, and I mean, it just, no, yeah. It's, you can't let one thing define the rest of your life, yeah. you know, um, and to be able to know that and accept that and and have a vision for the future and, and be so committed to that vision. Um, you know, I'm I'm if I would have chosen to stay in a marriage and that was my vision, we could have figured that out, too. You know, it wasn't my vision. Right. Um, and I own that. And that's a decision that I made and I'm OK with that. But I think it's again, it's self-forgiveness, it's love, it's releasing of ego, it's releasing of blame, it's yeah, continually yeah. communicating, um, and it's growing, you know, in your own personal faith. Um, Brittany says, I just love that y'all have been able to get to this place. It's so nice to see y'all should be super proud. Thank you, Brittany. And Amy said, I just want to share this with all my divorced friends. Oh, heck, even some married ones who don't cope as well. Yeah. yeah um, so uh, we won't keep you guys any longer. It's like 2.45 almost. Sure. So um, we love you. We love that you guys tuned in. Yes. Um, this is something that we're really proud of. I think it's yeah. one of the biggest accomplishments of my life. And I encourage um, you in co-parenting, in divorce, in everything in life, choose. Choose love. I'm backwards in the <laughs> But yeah. Choose love. Yeah. And choose happiness. And you're going to have those days where it feels like it's not there, but it is. And just keep choosing it every day. Yeah. Every day. And if, it's, if it can't be love for your ex and it can't be love for yourself, have it be the love that you have for your kids. Let That's that be. Right. Let that be what drives you. So anyways, we love you. We'll talk to you later. Bye. Ah, I can't press the right button. We're still going. <laughs>